How you doing? Beautiful Sunday uh, in Northern Virginia and Maryland today. We're gonna walk on the CNO Canal. Should have a great view of the uh, Potomac River. Uh, most importantly, it's got a lock system component to it, which we're gonna uh, show you in, the, in all. And I really like locks and canals and all that kind of stuff. exciting than a lock system I don't I don't know what it is so if uh, thinking locks are really cool is a bad thing guilty because I think they're really cool anyhow that was one of the many locks on the uh, Sino Canal today It's a beautiful day. A lot of people are out on this uh, canal lock out in Maryland. We're gonna enjoy it. The sun's shining, not a cloud in the sky. We'll take you through a pretty walk on the uh, CNO Canal. How you doing? Uh, wasn't able to finish up the video the way I wanted to out on the trail today, so brought it back home and um, hopefully spent about three minutes trying to explain something that I was thinking about out on the walk today. And what I was thinking about on the walk today was value exchange. How do we as individuals make sure that the thing about us that we see as the most valuable is recognized and that in turn we are valued in the way that we uh, expect to be, be that in a professional relationship or personal relationship, a family dynamic, whatever. Um, I'm, I'm going to use a quick analogy, which is a great movie called Jerry Maguire. If you know the storyline, there's two main characters. One is Jerry Maguire, a sports agent whose job it is, is to um, understand the value that his clients bring to a marketplace and get the highest return for that as a sports agent. Uh, the second character is a guy, but great character, Rod Tidwell. He's a wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, and he is trying to get the most in return for the value that he brings to the marketplace as a wide receiver, but the market doesn't see him the same way he sees himself, and he's gotta go kind of figure out other aspects of his life, get it together so that he you know, gets the rewards that he's looking for, whereas Jerry Maguire um, does two things kind of fundamentally at challenge. One is his 
his out of work life is a disaster. All the things that he should value, um, his girlfriend, soon to be wife or child, et cetera, he doesn't until it's almost too late. And then also um, he's got this interesting dynamic where the most valuable person in his life right now is, is his one remaining client, Rod Tidwell, but he kind of ignores him or doesn't value him the right way because he's going after this other high school superstar, I think his name is Kush or something to that regard. And he, um, he, he was at risk of undervaluing the most valuable thing in his business while he overvalued something that may never come to fruition. So kind of an interesting story there and just using it to parallel this thinking. So three real quick things. If you're out and you're trying to gain recognition for the value that you bring into a relationship, I would do a couple things. One is I would be very intellectually honest on what that value is. Don't by any means undervalue it and try not to overvalue it uh, too much. Recognize what strengths you bring into it, what goodness you bring into it, and how the other entity in that relationship should you expect them to value it. Recognize it, reward it, incentive, uh, incentivize it, etc. Be honest about that. Understand it, articulate it, demand it if that's in fact the case. Um, but that's kind of step one. The second step is to um, think through how is your value being recognized. And I'll use an analogy, which is um, on the front of a relationship. So let's say you're in a uh, boyfriend, girlfriend relationship and you, you, you're the boyfriend in that scenario and you're saying, wow, you know, it'd be amazing. I wish my girlfriend just thought it was the greatest thing in the world or my spouse, or whatever. I, it was the greatest thing in the world. And I don't understand why they don't think I'm the greatest thing in the world. I do A, B, C, D, and E. And you know, they should just be telling me I'm the greatest thing in the world all day. What, they, what that person may need to recognize is that that boyfriend or girlfriend doesn't exist unilaterally, doesn't exist in a vacuum. That person has best friends, that person has parents, that person has siblings, that person has an employer, that person has past relationship people, and all of those factors probably influence, jade, or promote how they look at you, how they value you in that particular relationship. The same is true in the workplace. So you're thinking I'm doing the world's greatest job and rightfully so, and that the market should recognize me or the boyfriend, girlfriend should recognize me for doing such a great job. And, and where I'm trying to think is how do we gain equity or balance there such that yes, that happens. People are recognized for the value that they bring uh, into a relationship, professional or personal, and B, that they also know how to navigate the ecosystem that affects how they are valued. So understanding who those stakeholders are, understanding how to positively or negatively impact those stakeholders in a way that allows your, uh, your mate to, in, this, uh, in this example to see you as, the, as valuable as you are. How to realize sometimes when to say, I don't wanna navigate all those things. I just expect this person to see this particular value exchange. Okay, maybe. Uh, but that might be a challenge for them. Or how do I go about uh, putting myself in a position where, where things are so clear to this other entity that um, you know, they have to see the value and they have to recognize that value, hopefully. And again, I'll take that back for the last minute uh, to the Jerry Maguire story. And what you found there on both sides of the equation is, is that Rod Tidwell effectively not only does a great job in a national audience um, where everyone kind of sees the value of him as a football player, but he continues to trade on the other aspects of his life where he derives a lot of value, which is his wife, his family, his friends and the like. And he brings that all together in kind of this one instance and is recognized accordingly for all the great things that he is. And Jerry Maguire goes through some kind of hills and valleys to get there where he loses his, um, his work relationship, uh, gets fired for it, loses his main client, conceivably loses his, um, his love interest, uh, Renee Zellweger in this story and her son, um, but then l luckily kind of sees the light and realizes what's truly important, where he truly has to be valued. And when, once he kind of realizes that and gains equity and balance, um, he's able in the story to go out and find um, success uh, in his business life as well. So hopefully that's remotely interesting or uh, at least not horribly boring uh, and insightful. Um, in addition to this little three to four minute soliloquy, we're also gonna uh, throw in some harmonica later uh, in the video. Uh, I think we're doing Neil Young's Harvest Moon today, so uh, try to take a listen and see if it sounds anything like your recollection of Harvest Moon. Uh, three and a half minutes into this, and great song.
together. Okay, let's start that again. Hey, I'm playing it in C, so that might, that might be why it sounds a little different, but it goes something like this. So Harvest Moon's going on, and then he hits it with... Something like that. Let's do it again. Okay, Harvest Moon, great song. Harvest Moon's going on, hits the, hits the uh, harmonica solo. Messing that last one up. Let's do it again. Harvest Moon.